Dr. Jen Ashton back now with a look at today's yeah. medical questions. And the first question, Dr. Jen, for someone new to intermittent fasting, yeah. what are the key basics to know when starting out? Well, I, I love this topic and I love this question. You and I talk about this all the time. There's actually a lot of scientific data, medical, nutritional science, published peer review literature supporting the benefits of intermittent fasting, also known as time-restricted eating, depending on which angle you approach it from. Um, you want to make sure that you're a candidate for this, so not pregnant, not a teenager, not someone with a history of an eating disorder, and then start small, 12 hours. Remember that a big chunk of that time, you're usually sleeping, and then you can gradually extend it 14 hours, 16 hours. You and I pretty much do 16 hours yep. most work days, and we actually find it pretty easy because it works with our work schedule. So And I can uh, drink coffee. That's, that's correct. <laughs> Black coffee. And we both do, <laughs> quite a lot of it. <laughs> Next question. This is so funny and how timely this is. One of the mm -hmm. previous segments robot was about to sneeze and I naturally just kind of wanted to move away so this goes with our question from our viewer I passed by a person in a grocery store and they sneeze without a mask Ooh. I tried to hurry up and push my cart in the opposite direction can you outrun a sneeze doc this is a great question you don't want to be in the splash zone oh. of, of someone who, who sneezes that's why you want the person the sneezer should be using good sneeze etiquette. But obviously, I'm not sure that they've ever studied this in a controlled laboratory setting. We do know that particles from a sneeze can tra travel over 20 feet. Remember, it's not just SARS-CoV-2 or COVID we have to worry about. It's a number of respiratory viruses. But as you both know, because we've talked about it here before, infectious dose really matters. So it's unlikely that one sneeze will get you infected with, let's say, flu or SARS-CoV-2. Mm -hmm. If that person had measles, you would have a much higher chance of becoming infected. So Splash zone? Her mm -hmm. splash zone? That's been not the medical the term. term. I did not sneeze. You I didn't. was able to do this, and yeah. I didn't sneeze. You stifled the sneeze. I stifled the sneeze. Yes. Is that safe? That that is, I'm not going to comment on <laughs> national television, but nor is that, that's not the medical term either. Okay. All right, next question. Moving on. Do we know if a vaccinated person from the UK can travel to the US freely? Hmm. Not yet, but this brings up a really interesting set of questions that so many people are asking about, thinking about, and probably working on. We've heard the country of Cyprus has already announced uh, that it will open up to people who can prove they've been vaccinated. Qantas Airlines also talking about how they will use proof of immunization against COVID-19 to allow passengers on and off. A survey done in the UK, most Britons, Britons uh, have said 54% that they would actually favor some type of policy mm -hmm. whereby if someone can prove they've been vaccinated, they can freely travel. But so many questions there, ethical, political, social, economic, we still don't know. All right, Dr. Jen, thank you so much. You and you can submit questions to Dr. Jen on our Instagram at Dr. J Ashton. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.